speaking with well-known Australian biotech entrepreneur, Dr. Graham Kelly this morning, co-founder and chief exec of new company, Philemon. Graham, good to see you. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to see you again, Andrew. Well, look, you and I have spoken previously uh, a number of times, but now your involvement in another biotech. Tell us more. Yes, well, Philemon is uh, my fifth drug development company. Um, uh, the other four companies still remain listed on uh, NASDAQ and the ASX. Uh, I, I, I've been uh, involved in Australian medical research now for about uh, five decades, mostly around cancer treatment. And after that amount of time, you develop a bit of an instinct for what is potentially breakthrough science. And the word breakthrough perfectly describes uh, Philemon science. Uh, I was approached by a number of uh, eminent doctors and scientists from some of Australia's top universities uh, who reached out to me uh, um, a, a couple of years ago to help them obtain funding for their science. And what instantly attracted me to that science is that it's tackling some of the biggest health problems facing the world. And it's using drug technologies that by any definition are groundbreaking and have the potential to make a lot of difference to a lot of people. And in the process, turn Philemon into a global player in the anti-inflammatory drug space. Well, tell us more about that. So what medical problems is Philemon looking to address? Okay, well, in a nutshell, diseases of the ageing. Uh, this includes cancer, uh, dementia, uh, degenerative eye conditions such as macular degeneration and glaucoma. These are all diseases whose incidences rise exponentially once you reach 60 years of age. And the one thing that links virtually all age-related diseases together is uh, chronic inflammation. Now, ageing itself is a normal process. Uh, we can expect that our tissues and organs are, are going to you know, gradually lose function as we grow older. But what we shouldn't have to put up with is an accelerated rate, uh, rate of ageing uh, due to chronic inflammation. And that's a disease process that uh, essentially is the body's response to a lifetime of wear and tear. It's okay to forget some things as we get older it's not okay to, to get dementia. That's the difference. Now, cancer, dementia, and degenerative eye conditions are, are all forms of uh, chronic inflammation or accelerated aging, if you want to use that term. And unfortunately, uh, there are few effective treatments for them. Now, what Philemon is focusing on is developing the next generation of anti-inflammatory drugs to treat these diseases. Uh, we live in an increasingly aging society, and that means uh, a, a huge and growing unmet need is looming that uh, Philemon is looking to, to meet. Well, I suppose the obvious question, Graham, there are anti-inflammatory treatments already on the market. What's the issue with, with what's currently available and what's Philemon offering that's different? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a fair point, uh, Andrew. The, the problem is that Chronic inflammation is a complex disease process. Uh, it builds up over years and it, it can involve hundreds of different genes. Now, for most people, the concept of inflammation uh, is the, the redness you, you see with a, a cut in the skin or the fever you get with a head cold. Now, older anti-inflammatories like Panadol, Ibuprofen and Aspirin, they're fine for simple forms of inflammation like that but they're completely out of their depth when it comes to, to complex uh, chronic inflammatory diseases. Panadol isn't going to stop cure a, a cancer or, or cure dementia. Then if you move up one level, you go to the current crop of the more sophisticated anti-inflammatory drugs that uh, they're being developed for chronic inflammatory diseases like asthma and rheumatoid arthritis. And those drugs actually work pretty well in those conditions. Uh, in fact, to the extent that they've created a market uh, worth about, in US dollar terms, $100 billion a, a year, $100 billion of, of drug is being sold for those conditions. But here's the problem. Those drugs are quite restricted in how they work. They're purposely designed to be quite narrow in, the, in their effect. They're simply not designed for highly complex uh, uh, inflammatory diseases. 
asthma, uh, asthma, for example, is nowhere near close to being as, a, as complex as cancer or dementia. And that's why current anti-inflammatory drugs simply don't work in these more complex uh, chronic diseases. Philemon has three drug technology platforms that have been specifically designed to treat these highly complex inflammatory diseases. Uh, these platforms uh, have produced novel first-in-class drugs uh, that are all capable of switching off multiple parts of the inflammatory process. And, and for that reason, they offer far greater likelihood of working than currently in inflammatories. Uh, thanks to some very clever Australian scientists, uh, Philemon is looking to succeed where many others have failed. And we're confident that, uh, that this opens up a whole new generation of anti-inflammatory drugs uh, where successful treatments uh, you know, could generate sales in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, Graham, tell us a bit more about your pipeline of treatments and, and where you're at with them. Okay, well, we've got a pipeline of five drugs and they range from uh, the drug discovery stage through to the preclinical stage and up, up, to, uh, up to the clinical stage. And uh, they involve the three big fields of oncology, dementia and ophthalmology. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just mention uh, two of those drugs here. Uh, the first is our clinical stage drug, uh, KSC2, and that's being developed as an anti-inflammatory drug for cancer. Now, uh, not many people uh, understand uh, that, uh, in fact, inflammation uh, plays a major role in cancer. Uh, it, its role is to create the so-called tumour microenvironment that occupies about half of all, all tumours, and that's responsible for driving cancer aggression and spread. And currently, we have no effective way of blocking that inflammation. Uh, so we regard this inflammation as the missing link in cancer treatment. No one's been able to do it up till now, and now uh, uh, KSC2 is offering that opportunity. Uh, that, this drug has been successfully uh, tested in patients with advanced prostate cancer. Uh, it's been shown to be safe and well tolerated. And, uh, and encouragingly, uh, it, it's even shown early signs of working in those patients that is slowing the disease down quite remarkably after just a short treatment course of six weeks. So we are now working quickly to bring it back in, into the clinic next year, and that'll be in a, in a large study involving up to about 60 cancer patients. The second drug is equally uh, uh, exciting and just as much needed. This is LKBT2, and it, it's designed uh, as a treatment for degenerative eye diseases known as age-related macular degeneration and diabetic macular edema. Both diseases that typically lead to blindness. Uh, uh, there are anti-inflammatory drugs available for both diseases now, but they only slow down the disease. They don't work in about one in three patients. Uh, so they're not stopping the disease. Plus they need to be injected directly into the eyeball every month for the rest of your life. Uh, an unpleasant treatment that causes almost half of all Australian patients to drop out of treatment within the first year. Uh, the Philemon drug, which is in the preclinical stage, looks to have the ability to actually stop the disease, not just slow it down. But more importantly, it can be, we believe, self-administered by eyedropper. And there are two outcomes that would revolutionise the treatment of these two diseases. Uh, to the extent that the Australian Federal Government and the University of New South Wales agree with us and have given us close to $5 million to help with that drug's development. Well, Graham, moving forward, uh, what are the next steps for Philemon? Well, uh, we need more money to do what we want to do. And that means we're currently conducting what we call a pre-IPO raise. Uh, we're looking to raise up to $5 million to help put the company on a growth path uh, that will take us through to a potential public listing uh, uh, within the current financial year. Uh, we need that cash to expand our infrastructure, to build up a a robust intellectual property library and uh, and to produce the data and news flow ahead of the of the proposed IPO. And uh, if people want to know further information about this raise, they can find it on the Philemon website at 
uh, www.philmon.com. And between now and that proposed IPO, uh, what can we expect to hear from you? Well, it's always a strong policy of mine to, to keep shareholders well informed of progress. And with an extensive uh, uh, portfolio uh, or pipeline across many big medical opportunities, we're, we're certainly expecting a, a steady news flow over the, next, uh, over the next year. So we'll make sure we keep the market well informed over that year through, through this platform. Great to see you again, Graham. Thanks for your time. Thank you.